Now we will discuss about the back of leg part 2. In this part we will discuss about the muscles of this region. So here are three superficial muscles and two intermediate one deep. So first of all we will discuss about the superficial muscles. So this is condyle of femur this is condyle of the femur and here is condyle of tibia here is fibula this is talus this is calcaneum this is tibia, this is fibula, this is fever, this posterior aspect of the fever. Now, first of all, we will discuss about the soleus muscle. This soleus muscle, here is line is present, that is soleal line. This is soleal line. So, soleus muscle takes origin from soleal line, from upper one third of upper one third of the medial border of tibia here the head of the fibula and upper one fourth part of posterior surface of the fibula this part and tendinous arch that is solial tendinous arch between the tibia and fibula so it takes origin like a dome shaped area from here to here here and it is inserted on this is posterior one third of the middle of the posterior surface of the calcaneum this is middle one third of the calcaneum this muscle is centered here this is tendon and the muscle which is just superficial to this that is this muscle this is plantaris. It takes origin from here. Lateral supracondylar ridge. From here, this muscle takes origin. It has a small belly and long tendon. This is long tendon and is inserted on the posterior surface of the calcaneum medial to insertion of the soleus this is insertion of the soleus medial to this is plantaris and the muscle it is gastrodimus it has two heads this is lateral this is medial head and here is lateral head so, medial head, head takes origin from superior medial part of medial condyle of the femur and it takes origin from lateral condyle. This is lateral head, this is medial head. So this is lateral head, medial head, this is lateral head and this is the muscle. And this muscle joins with tendon of soleus and Collectively, this tendon is known as 
tendo calcane a tendo achilles action of this action of soleus is plantar flexion at ankle joint and action of gastrocnemius is plantar flexion at ankle joint this gastrocnemius has under property it flex it is a v flexor of knee joint this is vestigial muscle this is plantaris it may be absent in some cases soleus muscle is known as peripheral heart by contraction of this muscle venous blood reaches from lower limb to above so it helps in circulation so it also known as peripheral heart so these are superficial muscle nerve supply of this is tibial now after this we will discuss about these three muscles of this region and one muscle is present in the upper part so here we will make another diagram this is condyle of femur here is condyle of tibia this is fibula here is interosseous membrane This is interosseous membrane between tibula, tibia, and fibula. Here is soleal line. This is soleal line, and here you can see this is the joint capsule. lateral meniscus here is medial meniscus this is lateral meniscus this is medial meniscus one must then takes origin within the capsule that is intracapsular it takes origin from lateral condyle passes through popliteal groove this is popliteal groove it also takes origin from or it attach with this lateral meniscus here it pierces the capsule and it comes out here it, so it also takes origin from the arcuate ligament and now inserted on posterior surface of upper part of tibia above the soleal line so this muscle is popliteus this is popliteus so this muscle is intracapsular in origin it takes origin from lateral part of lateral condyle also lateral meniscus and some fibers arise from the arcuate ligament and inserted on above the soleal line on the posterior surface of the tibia axon is its prime axon is it is unlocking muscle of the knee joint during flexion initial stage of the flexion it slightly rotate the femur laterally and thus unlock this knee joint So this is unlocking muscle of the knee joint. 
This is public yes. And there must have here. Here is the position of talus, calcanium. Here is navicular. This is navicular. This muscle takes origin from posterior surface of the tibia about two third upper part of the tibia this muscle is flexor digitorum longus flexor digitorum longus it passes deep to flexor retinaculum and come into the sole and here it divides into Four tendons. This is flexor digitorum longus. So it divides into four tendons, and these tendons are inserted on the base of the terminal phalanx, base of the terminal phalanx of the second, third, and fourth toes, fourth and fifth toes, second, third, fourth, and fifth toes. And this muscle has additional feature. This muscle is attached with this is calcanium. This is attached with flexor digitorum accessorius. Accessorius. So this is attached with flexor digitorum accessorius. And also it gives origin to lumbricals. Here is lumbricals first. Second, third, and fourth lumbricals. So it gives origin to first, second, third, and fourth lumbricals. This is flexor digitorum longus. And the muscle which takes origin from lower three fourths of the posterior surface of the fibula and adjoining part of the interosseous membrane. This this is flexor halicis longus. So tendon of this flexor halicis longus. Passes like this, passes deep to flexor retinaculum and inserted on the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe. So, this flexor digitorum longus and flexor halcyst longus are the flexor of the toes, corresponding toes, and here is it causes plantar flexion and engagement. And the muscle, which is this muscle, this is tibialis posterior. This tibialis posterior takes origin from posterior three-fourths part of lower part of the tibia near its lateral border. Introsseous membrane and the fibula introsseous membrane. So it takes origin from PJ here and it is inserted on. 
this navicular bone. This is inserted on navicular bone. There is tuberosity present in navicular bone, so it is attached with the navicular bone. From navicular bone, it gets slits to calcarium. There is cuboid, cuneiform, three cuneiform, and also metatarsal of the second, third, and fourth. So metatarsal of second, third, and fourth. So this is tibialis posterior muscle. Action of this we attach to medial side. So action of this is inversion. Inversion of the foot and plantar flexion. Inversion and plantar flexion. So we have superficial, intermediate and deep muscle of the posterior compartment of the leg. So this is all about the muscles of this region.